In covering drag and drop in previous lessons, we were creating event listeners for each card and then having the functions for those cards in each of the cards event listeners. And this strikes me as being a bit redundant and unnecessary because essentially each card will have the same drag drop functionality. So how can we make this more efficient? Well, one thing that we can do is we can basically create a master function to handle any card when you want to drag and drop it and delegating all of the touches for the cards to that function. So let's take a look at the code and we see that we've got the 10 of diamonds event listeners for touch start on line 51, touch move on line 63, and touch end on line 72. And each of those event listeners has its own code. Then the ace of spades has its touch start on line 78, its touch move on line 90, and its touch end on line 99. And really the code is just the same as the 10 of diamonds, except that it refers to the ace of spades. So what we'll do is we'll create a function to just handle any touches for the cards and then appropriately execute it. So let's create at the bottom just above handle touch ace.addEventListener touch start and we're going to refer to a function we'll create in a moment handle obj touch. And I'll copy this and paste it twice. Touch move and touch end. Copy these three lines. Paste them. And change the ace to 10 diamonds. And change the other two references as well. Now I'll create the function above this function handle obj touch and then e for the event object. Now since we're going to handle all of the touches with a single function there's a downside. We won't be able to reference to the objects by using the this keyword. Instead however we can do something var self equals e dot source. The source property of the event object is representative of the event handling the object. Now all we need to do is take our code from one of the event listeners. We'll copy it. So here from the touch start of the ace. And we'll do the following. If e.type equals touch start. Let's paste that code. Then else if e.type equals touch move. Let's go grab the touch move code and paste it. Else if e.type is touch end. We'll grab the touch end code and paste it. Now we're not off scot-free. The problem here is that the code that we pasted has this as a keyword, and this within the scope of a function does not necessarily refer to the object that we need to handle. Instead, we created this self variable which represents the object. Now we'll simply substitute this for self. Now, with self replacing all of the thises, we'll erase our old code. So I'll highlight all of the code that we used to have and delete it. So we have our event listeners attached to the 10 of diamonds and the ace, and they're all being handled by a single function, handle obj touch. And that function has three conditional branches, each one pertaining to an event. So if the event is touch start, if the event is touch move, and if the event is touch end. We'll save this and test it in the simulator. So now we'll tap and drag the 10 of diamonds and tap and drag the ace of spades. And we really see no difference. 
All of the difference is under the hood. We're using a single function to handle all of the touch events for the cards.